All right, and there is the completed thing for now. I'm gonna pull it down again and reset it, but I'll explain that later. So I don't know if you could see the... Okay, here we are, January 31st, and I really, really hate doing this before look. Um, I really do, but I'm knee deep in building the ham shack, just finishing from hunting season. The uh, ham shack's gonna go mostly here, but as you can see, I got tools strewn all over. I got the base of the uh, CP22E, power tools, cords, projects on this table. Um, so hopefully at the end of this video, if you ever see this, this is gonna be in shape because I'm gonna start cleaning it right now. And I got the guys uh, coming over today, hopefully, to try and get the antennas finished. Okay, so I'm making a little bit of progress. Uh, all of these boxes are gone. I sifted through them. These two are the ham radio supplies. There's all kinds of stuff in there. Everything that I ordered, how many months ago, I'm hanging just stuff up where it belongs. And uh, I figured out I'm gonna run that pipe. I'm gonna run them uh, coax cables through that sill up there in one of these two slots here because outside that's the LP line and there's it's clear on both directions so up here at least I got this shelf as a ladder I could punch through there bring the cable down and over for the ham shack throw your rope off the roof so we can tie it off down here Still got the, uh, block okay, we've got one casualty, and this is one of the brand new coax. Uh, it just came with a split. Um, we were very careful through the whole process, and the way it split, it's just kind of bizarre. So Mike's going to solder us up, patch us up. Okay, so it was super cold on this day, at least for down here. I want to say upper 20s, maybe lower 30s here as it got through the day. So uh, Mike tried soldering this and it just wasn't working because it was too cold outside. Great. Well, what we're going to do is we're just going to drag some solder from side to side here. So start bringing your solder down there. You put it under me. Yeah, there you go. Okay, the tower is complete for now. All right, you see I got it all grounded. Each leg I got grounded separate. And uh, the reason I have slack in them is because we're going to probably be tipping this down tomorrow and uh, taking that rope off. And I got a steel cable that I'm going to put up there so that I can raise and lower this whenever I want by myself. So those have slack so that I don't have to take them on and off every time we lower it. And then I grounded them all three together. So I got three grounding rods for each of the legs, ground them all together. And then down here, I have a grounding rod for my station. So, um, this obviously this mess is going to be cleaned up at some point with some nice uh, PVC line, but I want to get up, things up and running first um, before I go making anything halfway permanent yet. So, let's go in and ground the station and uh, check some SWRs. On this side. Maybe that's because I'm here, a jinx. That might be what it is. See, I had it flowing good on that side, pulling it right along here, we're starting to get it again. Okay, progress is about slowed to nothing right now. We're all stuck on that field repair out in that coax out there. Of course, it couldn't have broke on the longer end where we could have fixed it in here. It broke like six feet from the tower. So we're all stalled right now. All right, now we're gonna string up a dipole, especially since that HF rig has a cut line. Okay, that's the center uh, ballon going up. And we'll have two legs, they're 60, what are they, 66 feet each? Yeah. 66 feet each. All right, and there is the completed thing. For now, I'm gonna pull it down again and reset it, but I'll explain that later. So I don't know if you could see these two wires here. That's an 80 meter dipole, kind of in an inverted V. The other one goes down to that tree. And of course the uh, three antennas on the left, 
the Antron 99 in the middle, the 2 meter, and on the right, the 5 band. Oh, he wants to be here for the maiden. All right, it's, uh, it's been a, our good luck kind of turned bad, but now we've got a dipole hooked up, an 80 meter dipole. So this is the first time we're firing up the HF rig. We're going to have for supper. First, first contact on two meters, the diamond. Ooh. Okay, well, this is the first contact since we put that tower up. And uh, he's got one of those new radios, is a, a 100R. So uh, that's the new one I didn't like. So, but anyway, we're going to try to get a program on. Uh, he's going to probably uh, program it on Chirp. So we we'll catch you later. Uh, WA9LM, stand by. Nice. For my first simplex contact, Mike's probably yeah, 20 miles and his uncle is about 31. W9KAP on simplex. KG9MBL, yeah, you're coming in loud and clear over here, Joe, on that there diamond antenna. That dude is walking the dog. And uh, Uncle Ken it was, correct? Yep, Roger. You still in there, Uncle Ken? Yeah, I'm all drawn back here just to looking like this. Roger that. Well, you're looking good to me. Uh, did you say I was pegging your meter all the way down there, Ken? Yeah, you were on 44, but you're not here on 46. Uh, the antenna's a little mitch, mismatched uh, here on 46. Okay, Roger that. Just beautiful crystal clear audio, and when you drop down here on 520, there's a little bit in there, but I mean, you're still, I don't have a meter on this little radio, but you're coming in just as clear as Uncle Ken, so you guys are sounding good. I'll get this figured out tonight, and we'll, we'll start calling that other one simplex number one. Well, Roger that, then I'll have to reprogram, but... Uh... That's all right. I finally got it figured out. What did they charge you to download that program, to program the radio? Uh, it was 25 bucks. Well, that's a big accomplishment, uh, you getting that general tag. Your old man would be proud. There is no doubt about that. Too bad he would. Yep, I believe he would. I, I'm, uh... I'm just ecstatic, and I thank you guys for hanging in there with me, and, you know, uh, Uncle Ken, old Joe there, he's the one, he pushed me into getting my technician, so, I owe him a lot, hell, he pushed me and pushed me and pushed me, and we made it, and I, I'm just excited. I'm working on my extra, but I don't know if I'm going to pass it on the 11th, I might fail that darn thing. That won't hurt a thing to fail it. I don't make you bad because you failed it. Uh, you just keep on poking and you'll get it. But I, I, I've made advance and that's... Uh... Well, yeah, I remember, Mike, man. You were throwing in the towel more than once. Um, and I just tried to say, hey, just, just step back. Start over tomorrow again. You could do it. And uh, man, look at you now—a general class with nice ham shack up and running. So that's that's a good deal right there. Yeah, you got your tower up before me, Daggone it! I was trying like heck. Yeah, but now we know what to expect, right? Well, the first thing is when you cut the zip ties off that coax, it'd probably be a good idea to make sure there ain't no damaged coax before you string it to a 60-foot tower and stand it up. Yeah, that's for sure. And, of course, we couldn't get any good luck. I mean, even if it would have been, in, I mean, we had 50 more feet of wire, we could have been soldering it inside. But, of course, we didn't get lucky. Too far. 
ten more feet, we'd have been soldered it inside. <laughs> Okay, and here's a quick shot of programming my uh, Yezu FTM 100DR with a program by uh, RT Software, I think. Once you learn it, it was really pretty easy to do. So, uh, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun on 2 meters. Uh, HF ain't really up and running quite just yet, but hopefully you guys uh, stay tuned and and uh, I'll bring some videos. I have a real interesting um, Ham Wars video coming very soon.